So thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Greg Reyes. I'm a Chief Innovation Officer at RightPoint. Uh, what that means is I think about new technologies and how we can apply those technologies to improving people's lives uh, through the work that we do. Um, when I think about uh, future interfaces, I, uh, I'm reminded of this quote, which I love, uh, the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. Um, and what that means is that when we think about future interfaces, whether it's AR or VR or other future interfaces, we look around the world for examples of the things that we're trying to build, the experiences that we want to have, uh, the emotions that we're trying to create, the user experiences that we get excited by. Uh, when I think about future interfaces, I'm inspired by some of the things we see in film. Uh, these uh, futuristic interfaces with incredible graphics, things moving around in, in three dimension, um, these uh, immersive, uh, you just want to grab it, minority report, uh, all sorts of uh, experiences. And you see this across a lot of work in the movie industry. Uh, and there's so much inspiration that we can take, uh, both for either augmented reality, virtual reality, or ultimately applications that we end up building. Uh, movie experiences, movie applications, um, they're uh, incredibly interesting, but they're also oftentimes practically really bad. Uh, and so when we look at interfaces, we're like, wow, that's so cool. Why can't the interfaces that we have in our software be like those interfaces that we see in movies. And it's because the things that are in movies are oftentimes designed to capture your eye and stimulate your brain, but if you dissect them, they would actually be very difficult to use. And so what are some of those things? What are some of the pros and cons? So uh, the first, that things on screen are moving, and moving things are distracting. Uh, they're exciting to the eye. Um, but they're also difficult because they're distracting. And so you have to kind of balance the notions of, does it, is it moving to capture your attention or is it moving to distract you? Uh, the second one is it's not clear what you can touch and grab and move. And so on a lot of these interfaces you'll see in the movies, you know, everything is really exciting and the actor or the a uh, person in the movie will just grab a random object out of 3D and throw it onto the other screen. Well, that's nice if you know what you're doing, but in the practical user experience, you don't know what you can grab. You don't know what you can interact with. You don't know what is touchable, movable, draggable. And so that presents a user experience challenge and problem. Um, the third is there's a lot of information density. Uh, you know, there's lots of stuff blinking on screen and moving, and all of it is information, and that's great because there's a lot of information density, but it's also the drawback as well. When you have a lot of information density, it's more difficult to find the information that you actually need. Uh, and lastly, everything looks awesome in 3D, but interacting with things in 3D is actually somewhat difficult. And uh, we find that uh, two-dimensional interactions, especially if you're using a 2D touch surface, is easier than interacting with something in 3D, unless you have a 3D touch surface. Um, so this is a quick example of a, a futuristic interface that we developed for, um, you know, I'll call it a drone, it's not exactly a drone, but uh, there's a separate YouTube talk uh, on our YouTube channel for RightPoint that you can check out if you're interested in learning more about how we built this. Uh, but it's using elements of animation to attract the eye, but we tried to make it and design it in such a way that it's still very usable uh, because the interaction is still very much 2D. And so we're constantly looking at futuristic interfaces and how we can uh, utilize them, how we can make use of them. Uh, augmented reality is one of those areas that we're particularly excited about. Uh, you guys are all interested in AR, so I'm not gonna give you the basics, but uh, the main thing for us is that there's a huge number of addressable devices, uh, approximately 850 million, maybe closer to a billion of addressable devices that are out there that are accessible on uh, these pocket devices. And because of that, we're seeing lots of interesting applications for product visualization, uh, things like furniture, measuring uh, of either parts or information or room size uh, measurements, um, 
uh, statistics at sporting events, so putting stats or information about what's going on, uh, makeup and glasses, things like 1-800 contacts or Snapchat filters or L'Oreal and Estee Lauder are exploring makeup applications. Uh, wayfinding and in-store navigation is another example and uh, most obviously gaming. Um, you know, just two quick examples. Uh, on the left is uh, a quick example of kind of that facial recognition. This is using a lot of the technology in AR kit. And so you can see the AR is kind of pinned to Zev's head. And then uh, we actually have an example with my avatar where, uh, you know, he raises the eyebrows up and down and blinks and it kind of tracks him. Uh, the other example is something we're seeing a lot in retail. And this example of putting a 3D object on either a table or a floor uh, to visualize it, uh, in this case a shoe, and then you can have a virtual try-on session where you kind of walk up to the shoe, uh, put your shoe, put your foot in, and kind of get a sense of what that, that shoe might look like with your foot. Uh, not a perfect example, but you can kind of see two, two of those uh, six examples that I, that I listed out. Um, here's another one where it's a visual simulation of uh, a hospital and you can actually drop a hospital onto your uh, kitchen table and walk around and say hey you need to walk from this department over to this department and that's how you get there. So uh, lots of different examples of AR. Um, when I say uh, the future is already here, it's not evenly distributed. I really think about augmented reality and how quickly this technology is growing in terms of adoption. Uh, there's a uh, adoption curve of new technology which I love and so it took 73 years for the telephone to kind of reach this ubiquitous state where you know it's readily available and accessible um, you know smartphone is going to be in that same space in about eight years think about uh, augmented reality and how quickly augmented reality technology will effectively be ubiquitous um, you know the technology was readily introduced by both Apple and Google with AirKit and AirCore maybe a year and a half, two years ago, uh, thereabouts. And so the rate of adoption for augmented reality in terms of where we will be five years, six years, seven years into uh, the space of AR is really exciting. Um, you know, I mentioned, um, you know, some of the applications of AR. Uh, we're putting 3D things on things. I think the quintessential example of this is um, retailers putting uh, chairs where they don't belong. Um, here's Ikea, Amazon, and Wayfair putting chairs in random spots in people's homes. Uh, while, while it's kind of funny, I think there's really great examples of this product, product visualization, virtualization as well. Um, in addition to AR, we are looking at VR as well. Um, VR has, as you know, a smaller addressable market in terms of space, about 25 million uh, devices, give or take. Um, lots of interesting applications, but very different from augmented reality in terms of where we're seeing market pickup, meaning companies paying a development firm such as ours to build an interesting and exciting product. A uh, lot of interest in the gaming space, as you can imagine. A lot of interest in training and simulation, uh, especially for uh, expensive or large devices. Um, some interesting non-game entertainment, uh, so simulation is an example of that, but we're also seeing lots of use in video and movies, so things like watching Netflix with VR uh, is not necessarily an expected experience, but something we're seeing a lot of adoption of. Uh, and then I'm particularly interested in some of the applications around uh, medicine and health. And so lots of interesting use cases, in, including one you just heard about uh, in the healthcare space. Uh, in the VR world, we actually built uh, a playground. Uh, because VR isn't widely adopted, we wanted to see what the technology is capable of and how, how hard it is to build different experiences. So we built this little virtual playground where you could have a bow and arrow and you could shoot the bow and arrow. And we wanted to see, well, what's it like to interact with your hands? What's it like to pick up a tool? How hard is it both from a user experience perspective and then how hard is it from an engineering development perspective? That way when we're having conversations with companies about different simulations that we, they want to build, we have a better sense of what that looks like. Uh, we actually applied some of this uh, to a shopping simulation. Uh, again, for us, innovation is a mix of practical application and experimentation as well. And so this was more on the experimentation side where you could pick up a virtual object, 
uh, look around, uh, maybe see what that object would look like with different colors. Uh, and then uh, we had a virtual buy button. Again, buy buttons don't really exist in VR yet, but we wanted to see, well, what is the future of these devices look like? If we're getting fingerprint sensors on our phones, you know, if Apple or Google five years from now came up with a touch sensor, what would that buying experience look like? Um, this is showing, you know, some project, some products may not be practical, like a saber, to have in a retail experience. So let's let's explore what that might be like in virtual reality. Um, like I said, I have a personal interest in healthcare and medicine, and so uh, I head up an effort within my agency called RightPoint Health, and we're looking at different applications of innovation technology and future interfaces through the healthcare lens. Um, you know, we want to improve lives through technology and design, so our agency actually does uh, ISO 13485 work, so it's medical device work that can go through the FDA. We're working with hospitals and various portals and devices, a lot of medical IoT, and some digital therapeutics. Um, I'm going to show two, two examples of, of work that I'm particularly interested in. This isn't work that we're doing, it's just work that I'm following and tracking. Uh, one is uh, how you can do surgical training. And so prior to someone going into to surgery, uh, surgeons are now able to use MRI and, and medical imaging technology to visualize and virtualize what that surgery will look like. This both alleviates anxiety for patients and it helps doctors train for procedures better. Just a really exciting application of how virtual reality can be used to really impact people's lives in a meaningful way. Uh, the other example that I'm particularly excited about is a project that came out of uh, Hermes, uh, Brazil. And so what this is, is uh, this is for vaccines. And so a child can put on uh, these virtual reality glasses and get transported to this magical place. And the nurse has a companion Android application that she can see how to time her movements to be part of uh, the visual experience that the child is having. And so um, the child has this playful, exciting experience. They're transported to this magical world where this fairy uh, gives, gives her a shot. At the same time, the nurse is actually administering a vaccine. Uh, just an incredible application. No tears, no crying and screaming. It's just a much better experience. As you know, pain is very mental. And so if you can change the perception and change the anxiety around that pain, it produces uh, a very different user experience. Um, so really exciting stuff there. Uh, this is uh, some recent work we did for um, Angry Orchard. So Angry Orchard is uh, part of Boston Beer Works uh, here in Boston. Uh, and they wanted to um, explore the elements of uh, AR and how they could elevate their brand, their company to the next level. Uh, how many of you are familiar with wine pairing? You know, everyone pair their wine. How many are familiar with, with beer or cider pairing? Some, but a little bit less. Um, so uh, Angry Orchard wanted to really elevate the notion of food pairing with cider. And so they had done a lot of work exploring different recipes, different products, and they wanted to bring this to consumers. And so they wanted to uh, both gamify the experience, they wanted to bring it out into the real world so people could share it and experience it in bars and other restaurants. And they wanted to give something to folks to uh, be able to follow up and do it in their homes as well. So if you saw a particular recipe for New York style cheesecake or some uh, prosciutto based wrapped uh, goodness, you could then take it and, and try that out. So the general idea is you can hold up your phone, it can scan uh, the label and then provide um, some, some of those food pairings and kind of a visual experience around that particular product. Uh, Ryan, the cider master, would tell you a little bit about uh, the particular product that you have in your hand, maybe some of where it came from and some of the things that make it particularly special. So I know what you're asking, why AR? Um, and the key thing is we wanted to really elevate the experience. We wanted to make something that was interactive, not passive. And so it could have been just a video, it could have been, hey, here's a YouTube video telling you what this particular uh, cider is. Uh, here's a video of how to cook a particular recipe. But we thought that that was a pretty <coughs> passive experience. We wanted it to really be an interactive experience, something that people can hold in their hand, can see, can touch, and can have fun with. 
uh, we wanted to incorporate gamification. And so there's elements in the application where you can only see recipes for a cider that you have in your hand. And then as you experience new ciders, you unlock new recipes. And so there was a gamification concept that we wanted to incorporate in the application as well. And the lastly is um, social sharing. And so we talk about social media, but that's not what we were talking about. We wanted social sharing in real life. We wanted people in the real world to be showing the bottle to their friends and saying, hey, check this out, this is kind of cool. So let me uh, show you a little bit how it works. Uh, first, we have a bottle. Uh, we take a scan of the bottle. And so we're using uh, AR Kits technology to identify a tracking image. Once we do that, we can overlay a piece of video content on that and then allow you to swipe through various different recipes that are available. You know, once you find a recipe you like, you can actually go in and view that recipe in further detail. And then the kind of Easter egg is that if you back out of the view and kind of take your phone outside of the view of the beer bottle, you're actually transported to the orchard and you can see the full orchard experience and you're transported and you're relaxed and having fun with Ryan at the orchard. Don't you feel relaxed already? Isn't, isn't that great? So hopefully uh, you're like, ooh, that's kind of interesting. Download the app, it's free, uh, so you can check it out. You can experience some of the really interesting food pairings that are in the application. Uh, there's some really good ones. A lot of them are very pork flavored because Ryan loves pork and there's some really good combinations, but there's really something in there for everybody. And so you can check it out. Uh, under the covers, there's a lot of interesting things in terms of how the scanning works. And so for some of the developers out there, um, this is a little bit under the covers. What we're doing is uh, we are getting a tracking image uh, from the bottle. Uh, and we're specifically taking a very small section of the bottle because we want to have this technology be fast on the phone and we want it to be universal. So uh, Angry Orchard has a number of different bottles and cans and we wanted it to be universal in terms of it being able to very quickly detect those images. So now we know we have a bottle, uh, but we're not quite sure which bottle we have. And so there's a bunch of different variations of what that looks like and so what we end up doing is we're using elements of machine learning to actually help us solve this problem. And so because the bottles um, have uh, some distinguishing characteristics, like you know, there, there's certainly parts of the bottle that are unique, uh, we can use those. But because these bottles are, are used in, um, or they end up being in locations with very different lighting conditions, oftentimes bars or different things, you can't reliably use color. Uh, because sometimes blue will look like a different shade and you want it to be super fast so you don't want to necessarily rely on something like character recognition. So we have uh, over uh, 1200 images that we captured of these bottles in different lighting conditions and we're using uh, CoreML on the phone to use machine learning to train uh, the phone, how to detect different images and detect the different mm -hmm. bottles. And so uh, we're first using AR Core to detect uh, the specific bottle that allows us to tie into a particular bottle. And then we're feeding that into the machine learning algorithm to then give us back um, the exact flavor that, that you're holding in your hand. So just a real fun, um, fun example, fun uh, application of AR and VR and AI. Um, you know, this in particular is an example of uh, you know what we think about in terms of future interfaces. There isn't anything, uh, as you can imagine, Minority Report-ish about this. You know, we tried to make the application very approachable, very easy. You know, the 3D is visualized, so you have that 3D visualization, but we're using 2D interactions to make it really easy and approachable for folks to interact with. Uh, we're building in real life social interactions. So we're encouraging and using some of the benefits of, of AR to let people play and let people have fun with their products and experience. 
And lastly, the content is the experience. Like none of this works really well unless you have great content. And so both the video content that we have from the Cider Master and the recipes combined with the technology give us something that we think is really exciting. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't think we have to go back uh, to the future to build future interfaces. And uh, I'm really excited about uh, building, building the next generation of interfaces.